Hey, what's going on guys? Deanna from ModBot here, and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at this guy right here in front of me, which is the Crowdy Ender 3 3D printer. Now, ever since the CR10 gained its popularity, I've had my eyes on Creality. Um, I got very close on a couple occasions to actually picking up a CR10, um, but I decided not to. I had the JG Aurora A5, and for 99% of my printing, having that large of a build volume isn't really beneficial to me. Uh, also, because I have one bedroom full of a bunch of stuff, I don't exactly have space for all that extra height, uh, especially if I'm not going to be using it. So I decided to hold off on the CR10. I know a lot of people love that printer still to this day. Um, my neighbor got it as a second printer and it has been a complete and total workhorse. I'm knocking out beautiful print after beautiful print with just a couple of tiny little modifications he did here and there. Then there was the Ender 2, which I got even closer to picking up. A buddy of mine at work that is his main machine at the house and he loves it. He's been doing all sorts of upgrades and for the cost of also being below $200, it is a very budget friendly printer that has a huge following of people that love it. I know uh, I've seen people on uh, Reddit that actually have like a farm of the Ender 2. So it is a really, really popular printer. Uh, and again, I was on the fence about getting it. I just got really busy with all the machines that I had in that I kind of decided, eh, I don't really need to get the Ender 2. Then fast forward to a couple of months ago and the Ender 3 was announced and I knew that I had to have this machine. Um, I saw a picture of it and it looked a lot like the CR10 but in a smaller form factor and a price tag that was much, much lower than the already budget friendly CR10. Uh, it was said to be around $200. I ended up picking mine up. Uh, I pre-ordered it and I think I paid $194 uh, and it took about a month to get in. Uh, that was because I pre-ordered it before the stock was even in. You can get it probably, you can get it a lot quicker now, not probably, you definitely can get it a lot quicker now. So um, it had the build volume that I wanted, which was 220 by 220 by 250. And um, I just, again, decided this is it. I'm finally taking the dive and going with a Creality 3D printer to see what all of the hype has been about and see if I feel the same way about the printer. So when the printer finally showed up, it came in this tiny box. I was actually very surprised that they were able to fit a printer that has this much going on in such a small box. Um, it is a pre pre-assembled kit in a sense. Um, it does require assembly and I've heard that the CR10 and the Ender 2 is a much quicker assembly um, with less parts involved. But compared to the kits I've done, this was a, a very, very quick process still. I think I had it up and running within an hour. The manual it came with was a printout manual that was not terrible, but not great. Uh, the pictures were fine and things like that. However, there were a couple points where it didn't tell you which screw size you were supposed to be using. So I had to either guess or kind of move forward a few steps and see, hey, these are where the screws are, screws are used, so I obviously need to use these ones. So it takes a little bit of thinking, um, but hopefully they'll update that. And again, it, it was no big deal, um, and it was still very, very easy to assemble because there's only so many screws that this comes with since the majority of it is still assembled in a few big pieces. So as far as specs go, it's got a 220 by 220 by 250 build volume. It's got a 0.4 nozzle that can hit 255 Celsius and a bed that can hit up to 110 C, which means that out of the box, you're gonna be able to print everything from PLA, ABS. Uh, I did a little bit of TPU with it um, and I've done quite a lot of PETG on it without any problems at all. Uh, it does have the same exact form factor overall as the CR10, so I would imagine based off what I'm seeing from the hot end, you should be able to throw in an all metal micro Swiss, which is pretty much just a complete swap, which doesn't require any sort of modifications at all to the printer other than removing and assembling. Or of course, if you wanted to, um, you can install a CR10, I'm sorry, you can install an E3D V6 or something like that if you want to print out a custom uh, mount for it. And that shouldn't really be that hard to do because a lot of this stuff, again, is uh, very much so the same as on the CR10. So aside from that, we've got an all metal frame, which is um, her all aluminum frame, which is really, really nice. The machine is really rigid. I don't feel too um, sketchy moving this thing around. I carried it out here by just the top bar and that seemed fine. Um, you've got a Sanguino style board, which is inside of this aluminum enclosure, uh, which has an exhaust fan, which is really nice for keeping the board cool. You've got an LCD screen on it so you can navigate the built-in micro SD card slot. And there's also a mini USB cable, which is a little bit different. I don't know why they went with mini USB instead of just like the standard printer type cable, but nonetheless, it works fine. Um, you've also got a PSU, which is mounted on the back, which is really, really nice. Um, not only is it nice that it's kind of mounted out of the way, it's got an enclosure on it so the mains aren't exposed, which on nine out of 10 Chinese printers, that is a big safety thing, so I like that. It's also got a fuse protection, an on and off switch, and 
the plug it takes is just a standard desktop style PC cable. So um, that is also nice. I like that it is very um, universal and if you were to lose your cable or need to pick one up, you could run to any store and pick up just a desktop cable and you're good to go. So again, although you don't really need to upgrade anything, I was very happy with the print quality right out of the box. There's still a lot of upgrades you could do if you want to. Um, back to that hole, it's just like the CR10 in a sense. You can you can take a lot of those and upgrade it because everything is all here and it's got aluminum uh, frame. It's very much so accessible in every way, shape, or form. And that means that you can go ahead and mod it and hack it away to your heart's desire if you decide to do so. The only things I've done to it so far is I added a BuildTech flex plate because this is actually a machine I'm using for orders that I sell. And it's really nice to have a flex plate um, to be able to pop off some of the flat prints that I print. Also, I added a BL Touch just yesterday and that was a hell of a project, which I'll go ahead and make a separate video on because hopefully if I make a video on it I can save you guys some time when you're trying to do it because it was an all-day event for me um, but it's working beautifully which is awesome I actually convinced a buddy of mine to pick this up as his first 3d printer he has had it now for probably a month and he's been loving it he's done a couple of printable upgrades and the only main thing he's done is he added some of the stepper motor damp dampeners to the stepper motors and he said that when he added those the printer is so so quiet um, the next thing is to silence the uh, fans if he can get some of the um, if he can get some of those Noctua fans that would make the fans a lot quieter but this is still a lot much quieter printer than some of the printers that I've owned so as far as sound goes I'm not too upset with the sound quality or the sound noise that you're getting from this thing right out of the box. So last year it was the Mono Price Maker Select Mini that I was recommending. This year, this is definitely the machine that I'm recommending, hands down. Um, if you're looking to get your first 3D printer, this is a fantastic machine. If you're looking to add a printer to your arsenal, you cannot go wrong with this machine at 200 bucks. Um, it is just an unbelievable printer. Um, I do plan on picking up a second one. I'm gonna make these my like kind of workhorse machines because uh, I've been able to print out a lot of parts on them over and over again and it's very repeatable. The quality has been just spot on. Um, so I will go ahead and place a link in the description. I'll place two links for this printer so that way you can either find out more or purchase one for yourself. I'll place one to Amazon. On Amazon it's 240 so you are paying like an extra 40 bucks. But if you have prime shipping, you get free two day shipping and you also get Amazon's killer 30 day warranty. So if you buy it and decide that, hey, 3D printing is not for you or the machine's broken or anything like that, you can return it and they're really good about um, refunding you and things like that. Um, I'll also place a link to GearBest where you can pick up this printer for I think 180 ish dollars, uh, especially if you go with the European plug. And again, the plug is just a standard desktop plug. So um, the European plug, uh, although it's, you know, European plug, you can just swap in a US plug and you'll be good to go. Or you can go with the US plug version, but I think there's a differentiation in cost, which is a little bit strange on that. So anyways, if you hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got any other uh, questions for me at all, let me know in the comments down below and I will gladly answer. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace guys.